Hello, I am Seth Manfield, and I'm going to be recording a video today for you all featuring standard, the standard format on MTG Arena. And we are going to be playing Azorius Aggro. So this is essentially a mono-white aggro deck with a very small splash of blue in the sideboard. And in fact, there's no blue cards in the main deck, unlike some other lists. It is very, very streamlined. A bunch of one drops here. You see your Convoke one drops, your Bodyguards, Legion's Landing, very important one there as well. Adanto Vanguard is the two drop of choice. Some players have moved away from Vanguard. I'm still a Vanguard fan. It's it's a must answer threat, especially against control. And then we've got our top end. So these are going to be the cards that allow, there's some cards here that allow us to pump up our team, which is really important since some of the one drops aren't that beefy, if you will, on their own. So we've got Benelish Marshall, Unbreakable Formation, and Venerated Luxton. Unbreakable Formation is a card that is not only a pump spell, but it also can save your creatures from something like a Kaya's Wrath, which is really, really nice. History of Benalia, we know how good that one is. Really strong card. There's also a Knight package in the deck, so you can also pump up some of your other creatures. We've got the Convoke spells, so Conclave Tribunal is the flexible removal spell in the main, and then the Venerated Luxton. So the deck can pretty much operate off of three lands. That's why you're, there's only 20 lands, because you don't really want to draw that many lands. And also, Legion's Landing can become a land as well. So then we, let's talk about the sideboard for a minute. So we have four copies of Baffling End. Baffling End is the best cheap removal spell that you have access to. And in some in a lot of matchups, it's going to be better than Tribunal, but Tribunal is the more flexible spell. But this comes in a reasonable amount of the time. Takatli is great against Sultai, Enter the Battlefield type creatures. Negate and Dovin are the blue cards in the list. So Negate is primarily for control. Dovin and Grand, Dovin Grand Arbiter and Ajani are for your mid-range and control matchups. I like Dovin. That is the primary deviation here between the list that just recently won the classic. But I, I like the two Dovin, two Ajani in the deck. So this is the deck. And we are going to be playing it. So we're going to be playing a traditional constructed event. Sorry about that. So we have chosen our Azorius Aggro deck. And so essentially with these events, you need to win five rounds before you get two losses. If you win five, you're essentially done. And so that's going to be our goal, is to, to get five Ws on the board. Hopefully we can do it. We'll see. Our opening hand, we are on the play. We've got a bunch of one drops. This, this is what we want. This is exactly what we want. And our opponent's on, on a mulligan, so perfect. Um, we can start on just one of our two ones. Don't think it's going to matter too much between the bodyguard and the aspirant, most likely. Oftentimes, you do want to play the bodyguard after to be able to protect something. So, so we can protect the aspirant here. And then you see how explosive the deck is. So already next turn, we can potentially 
either flip our Legion's Landing or play a Venerated Luxodon. I think I am going to go for the flip here of the landing. That's going to allow us to get in 5 damage, which is really nice. And we can also adapt. We can also use Adanto the first fort. I don't know exactly what our opponent's playing. It could be some sort of wilderness reclamation deck, like team of reclamation, based on what we've seen so far. Would be my best guess. Yeah, something with Nexus of Fate seems like the the most likely deck our opponent's on. So now, I think we're actually just jamming the Luxton. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and activate the Adanto. And there's not too much in the, the team or colors that can fully punish this play. So we're just going to really beef up our squad here. And this is going to be really tough for our opponent to beat. Really, really tough. Might as well jam this Marshall as well. They could have a Fog, so if they're playing... Okay, so that's that's a Fog sort of effect. Not not a straight up Fog though, our opponent still goes to 6 there on that, on that attack. Actually, one play I wasn't thinking about that I probably should have been thinking about was just Conclave Tribunaling away the Gift of Paradise. Might have been right in that spot, not sure. Anyways, we're just gonna try to go for lethal, see if our opponent has another, another chill. I haven't done the exact math, it, it could be lethal. Yeah, it, it was lethal, thought it might have been. So we know our opponent's on some sort of fog style deck, so we do we definitely want our four copies of Negate. That's gonna be our most important sideboard card. Hunted Witness is gonna be the one drop that I, that I most readily will, will want to take out. And then as far as the Planeswalkers, those are the other cards that I'm considering here. And I think a Johnny makes the most sense given the matchup over something like some of, some amount of Conclave Tribunals. I like having some, and then we also want to think about what our other cuts might be. I'm okay with shaving on Luxton against aggro because you really want to be super fast. And then one Snuphorn Sentry. Snuphorn Sentry is one of those cards that's also not super, like, it's not the one you want to lead off on, right? It's the one later in the game that, that gets big, which is nice, but you do need to be able to ascend in order to do that. Yeah, only one land there. Have to mulligan the first hand, but this this hand is good. We're gonna keep the Adanto Vanguard on top, and we've got a really nice curve of landing into Vanguard into history, and then we also have this negate. Hmm. Ooh, another Vanguard. So, and Teamer doesn't have great answers to Adanto Vanguard, as it turns out. Like, most of what I would think they would have for removal are cards like Shock and Lightning Strike and maybe Lava Coil. Hmm. So interestingly, our opponent could have a counter up. I think we want to jam the history here. Um, it could get countered, as I mentioned. But also we want to set ourselves up into a situation where we may be able to go Adanto, Vanguard, and Negate in the same turn, which would require one more land. 
Another land also allows us to cast a Johnny, but our opponent's really far behind now, so they're going to need something. I'm not sure that they're going to be able to find it. We can now attack and flip our landing, which is essentially another land. So we're able to do that. And so now we we have a choice of how we want to deal with this fire cannonade. We can either negate it or we can formation it. I'm going to negate it because it allows us to also, well, so if we formation, if we formation, our opponent takes, they're taking six. And then next turn we can have negate up, which might just be lethal with the history coming off. So actually on second thought, I am gonna just give our, our team indestructible. Because if our opponent has a fog effect for next turn, we can just negate that and have lethal this way. So I think this is right. Cannonade is one of the sweepers, one of the only sweepers really that the teamer can play. Okay, so we'll see if they can put something. If they can cast an additional spell off this Electro Dominance. But you know what? That's not necessarily going to be enough. I guess our opponent is taking on board eight. But we also have a Johnny and Ben Elish Marshall. So this should just be game, and it is. And that's what the this deck can do. I mean, it's super, super explosive, and like the teamwork colors. We, I mean, our opponent Mulligan and maybe their draws weren't great. The, the, the timing of the fiery cannonade was a little bit suspect, but overall, I just it felt like we just ran over our opponent, which which can happen. Sometimes you just run over your opponent. This is a keep, even though the snubhorns. Are, this is one of your like slower draws, right? You just get, we're just gonna play out these snubhorns and we're gonna hope to ascend. We go snubhorn, snubhorn, snubhorn. Then we maybe play the Luxton or the History, and then by that point, by say turn four, if we're able to ascend, then we will have an, you know a great board by that point. So definitely a keep, but not not a handle where we will be dealing much damage in the early turns. All right, that's interesting. The main phase opt, I never really fully understood that. We have a decision here. I do think we want to, now that we've drawn it, play the Adanto Vanguard, because it is able to actually deal damage on the next turn. With a land, we will have, the op we will have options if we draw a land. Okay, well, so that's unexpected. Our opponent just conceded there. All we saw was opt. So I don't know that that's enough to make an educated decision here as far as sideboarding. Could be mono blue, but mono blue normally has one drops that they would be playing there. So my guess would be that it was just a Drake deck that got mana screwed. But I think rather than Cyborg, I'm just gonna resubmit because we don't have quite enough information. And to be honest, our our game one config is like not gonna be bad against any op deck, most likely. Not that it's our best config, but it's not gonna be bad.
All right, this seems pretty good. Nice, nice curve out. Looks like potentially Drake's was the right guess. Adanto Vanguard is pretty good against Drake's. So I think that is going to be our play. Once again, it's a situation where their removal just doesn't really deal with Adanto Vanguard. Now they can play Enigma Drake's or Crackling Drake's and try to block it, um, but then if we have Pump effects, that, that plan also isn't necessarily the best. So, yeah, I think we just play the Marshall. Marshall, we can also, or it's either Marshall or we just play Hunted Witness and then Luxodon. So Marshall allows us to get in immediate damage, although the nice thing about the play, there's there's definitely advantages to playing our first Luxton here. I think on second thought we do just want to do this. It means we're not getting in damage this turn, but the Luxton having that in play is going to sequence much better into these Benelish Marshals. It's also fairly likely our opponent just has a removal spell like a Lava Coil to get rid of something, which could have been getting rid of a Benelish Marshal. Interesting to see. I suspect our opponent does not attack, but we'll see. So we could use this to get rid of the Drake. I don't... Yeah, I mean, if we do that, we're getting in for a nice chunk. Not sure what we'd really be too worried about. So if we play the Marshall and attack with these two, that's still a good, a good play for us as well. I think I'm going to do that. Just save the Tribunal in case, in case we really need it. And if our opponent trades Enigma Drake for Dauntless Bodyguard, that's normally a good trade for us. We could have also Luxodon that turn, but we couldn't have played Marshall and Luxodon. So if, if we had drawn a cheap threat, it's possible we would have wanted to, to Luxodon. But... Yeah, our spot's really good, kind of, no matter how you slice it here. We have to be a tiny bit worried about running the Tribunal into a dive down. That would be the reason to have Tribunaled on our last turn, is we now are going to run that risk potentially, but we, don't we, we also don't even necessarily need to play this Tribunal. Our opponent might just be straight up dead, as has been the case before. And in fact, there's two dive downs in the graveyard. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's another removal spell here. But that's pretty much all our opponent can do. I guess they could also have a shock here. But I don't think they're beating a second copy of... Well, they're not beating any of this stuff, really. So it's either we try to be, yeah, it doesn't really matter how we do this. I guess I'm gonna go with the tribunal. And this should be just lethal. Because shock doesn't actually get rid of any of our creatures at this point. And had we gone for Marshall, I believe we also would have had Lethal. 
or maybe we would have been one short because we would have had two four fours. So yeah, I guess if we wanted to force lethal for sure, this was just the right play to tribunal the Enigma Drake. So this hand is one of our weaker hands that we've seen so far, but I I am gonna keep it. Four lands is, is a lot. Any five land hand is an easy mulligan. Four lands, it's close. We do have, this is a close hand. And it looks like we may be playing against Saltai. Which can be a difficult matchup, but certainly it's Still close. Finality is the card we have to be worried about the most out of this deck and Wild Growth Walker. Wild Growth Walker plus Explore Creatures can be a problem. So we can history here, but then we can't attack. So I think we're we're marshalling just to make sure we can get in for six. And they do have that curve. This is essentially the best possible curve the Saltai deck can have against us. And our opponent's not attacking either. So if we play the Marshal, we still wouldn't have great attacks. So it's time for history. We're gonna be, well, it's not great that they have these, these Jade Light Wild Growth Walker stuff shenanigans going. We're gonna try to time the history going off with a big attack, because we have, we have all knights in play, and we, have, we also drew another history, so we're able to really kind of go go wide here with with our knights and so we have a lot of them unfortunately there's nothing we can do there the the dauntless bodyguards were not protecting the Benelish marshal So we're setting up, we've been setting up this turn, but there's still a question of what we can actually do. So we can, we can play the Marshal. The issue here is that the J Lights can trade off with the Bodyguards and the, the Wild Growth still eats one of the, the Knights. So we don't have great attacks. Especially with our opponent being at 24. And, th and this can happen sometimes. I mean, finality, like I said, th this was kind of the best draw our opponent could have had. And we didn't, we also didn't draw a tribunal for the wild growth walker. So that's fine. Um, on, to, on to game two. We're going to go with our, our planeswalker plan. And I also like the having access to baffling ends is generally good. We're going to go lower on Luxedens because they don't really work that well with your Takatli Honor Guards. Unbreakable Formations, we can cut those. 
And then we, we do still want to have some aggressive elements, certainly. But we are we're more planeswalker based. The tribunals are like I generally prefer baffling end, but they're somewhat interchangeable. And depending on what plan we think our opponent's going on, boarding out Benelish Marshal is actually reasonable because they have so much they, they have a high density of removal. And so I'm just going to board in a couple of negates as well to give us that that little bit of, of protection against finality. So the deck definitely changes quite a bit after sideboard. In the matchup, you want to be able to protect against finality. And you want to have more resilient threats. Now this hand doesn't showcase the way we sideboarded at all. Um, I, I still think it's one we, we just have to keep. Doesn't have any of our sideboard cards in it. But it's still just a reasonable hand. We're certainly hoping for no Wild Growth Walker. We can flip our Legion's Landing, so what we really like is one of our Cyber Cards. Like one of our Planeswalkers would be perfect here. Unfortunately, we don't have one of those cards. So I'm just gonna pass. We we also boarded in four copies of Baffling End. So Baffling End would have been a great answer to the Wild Growth Walker, and still would be a good answer to it. We boarded out some of our one drops. So next turn we can hit the City's Blessing for the Snuffhorn Sentry. But. As I mentioned, we're, we're looking for, for any of our sideboard, any of the cards we sideboarded in would be good. So there's a history. We're definitely playing that. The question is whether we want to make us basically a suicide attack. I don't think so. We're not desperate to, to flip our landing right now. Mm -mm. And a Johnny is kind of our pump effect. A Johnny and Luxton. We boarded out some of our other pump effects, so. Well, and history. I, sh I should also count his history in that, that mix. So here, if we wanted to flip the landing, we could make an aggressive attack, but once again, next turn the history is, is reaching the third chapter, so I think we're just passing. If the history indeed, I mean, right now our opponent doesn't have black mana. So hopefully that's constraining them somewhat. Like if they don't have, say, a, a, I was about to say a Merfolk branch walker as well to go along with the the the, the uh, wild growth walker. So now we're back in a spot where we might need to top deck. That being said, I think we're just attacking here. Letting the letting the board kind of clear off a bit. They, this attack isn't very. It's not a great attack. Our opponent has pretty good blocks, but at the same time, it's not really a better option. So 
So we did get in some damage there. But not really how we wanted things to, to go so far. So we finally drew a baffling end. Oh, that was that was a mistake. I the, that was the auto tap. Or I, I didn't mean to tap Ardanto. So yeah, sorry about that. That's kind of awkward. Um. So now we I guess we we can we can also take out this incubation druid as well. If we took out the crass, as it means we can attack in the air. I'm just gonna take out the druid, but yeah, that th we definitely wanted the Adanto to to not be not be tapped right now. Um, but. So taking out the the mana dork there allows us to potentially constrict our opponent on mana, maybe stop a potential fine finality. But it looks like they had another druid. Okay, um, I kind of want to just act, I'm just going to activate this now, so I don't make the same mistake. So we can, we can again go for, for that play we just made of taking out the druid. And I think that's right. as part of our mana denial plan. Like taking out a Krasis does not feel good. Two point like two points of damage is not gonna be enough to get to get it done. Alright, the the Brontodon can now trade trade off with one of our enchantments. We also didn't draw to Kotli this game, which would have been really good against the Wild Growth Walkers. I mean, it's possible we're supposed to mulligan that hand, but on the surface, the hand was good. But it, it didn't contain the cards we necessarily really needed. This was one of those cards. Finally drew it. Our kinship ensures our victory. So I am I think I'm gonna pump up a Danto. And Snubborn Sentry. To try to set up the ability to have a nice ground attack. Now we, we do have to dodge finality here. Contempt is pretty good too. Yeah, there's a finality on top. That is probably just game. Unless we draw a negate to counter it. Yeah, I think we're dead. So yeah, we saw there kind of why the Sultai matchup can be kind of rough. Um, but we, you know, our draws also didn't line up that well, so it was a bit of both. Anyways, this hand is really nice. 
We're just curving two two ones into more two ones and then bashing our opponent, hopefully. Zoria's guild gate. So we're up against a gate stack. That's what that means. And gates isn't they pretty much need a gates ablaze. To be able to deal with what we're we're putting on the board. So they're saying good game, which means they may already be dead. I'm playing the Adanto Vanguard because it's to play around Gates of Blaze. Like, we can we can activate the Vanguard if our opponent has Gates of Blaze here. So we would actually essentially save multiple creatures. If they had the Gates of Blaze, which they do not. So I think we still want to try to play around Gates of Blaze if we can. I think I'm gonna go ahead and Tribunal away the Guild Summit. I don't think we're playing out the Snuphorn Sentry here. Although I guess we might as well, because if our opponent has a, a Gates of Blaze, we're not really getting to the City's Blessing with this hand very easily, because some of our creatures will die. So I'll just play out the Snuphorn, and it'll make it very easy. Yeah, so they, they did have it. So that's why I, I, like, I like the way we played this game. Um, to try to play around with this. Now, obviously it's not guaranteed that it's going to work. Our opponent also did not have a third gate, it looks like. So the Snubborn Sentry is still in play. And I think this Marshal is actually just lethal. So... Had we drawn our Unbreakable Formation, we would have been able to play around Gates of Blaze that way as well. So Cyborg cards I like. I like some Negates. You don't want to go too heavy on these because there's not actually, like, we want to make sure we're still being as aggressive as possible. So I'm going to board in two copies of Negate and two copies of a Johnny. We, the tribunals, yeah, the tribunal wasn't really relevant there. Sometimes they board in gate breaker rams, but there's not that many early things that you care about. So we can definitely cut some of the, the tribunals. And I think I'm just going to cut them all. Like, getting rid of the guild summits and the the rams isn't really our primary game plan. We're just trying to bash. Trying to bash. And that's what this hand should be able to do. So when we see that basic forest, that's generally a good sign. Although I guess they needed to play it to enable the Bane Fire to be cast. But yeah, it looks like our opponent is missing some of their colored mana. So I'm definitely going to jam the history now. And we'll try to set up a situation where we can play around Gates of Blaze if possible. There's a ram, but we can we can still fight through the ram. The question is if it's possible to play around Gates of Blaze. I don't know that it is. 
I mean, we could play around it a little bit, but I think I think here we want to be playing out a bunch of our stuff to set up for next for next turn. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to protect one of the our opponent might not also only has two gates. So we're, we should be aware of that as well. So even a gates of blaze doesn't necessarily sweep away our creatures. So next turn should be fairly insane for us if our opponent does not have the Gates of Blaze. If they do, okay, they don't. So yeah, it should be fairly insane for us. We get to formation and then just attack for a billion. Even with these rams, I don't think our opponent can do anything. And this is this is why unbreakable formation can just be absurd. Is I mean this is just this might just I think this is just lethal. Yeah, this is just lethal by by actually a reasonable margin too. And so, I mean this is this is what the deck does. It just kills people. Like that was that, that was just crazy. I mean. If you like aggressive creature based decks, this is it. Like this is the creature based aggro deck. Now, mono, there, there's mono red and mono blue, but those are a little bit different. This is very go wide, play a bunch of creatures. And the hands are nice, the curves are nice. Like we get to just Curve one into two into three. Okay, so our opponent's on looks like Esper control. So the, the, the Unbreakable form Formation is a key card in the matchup because it's, it can get you around a Kai's Wrath. So we definitely want to be thinking about that as we play this one. Also want to be thinking about whether we can get to Ascend on our next turn, which is, it, it is possible that we may want to, to allow that to, to happen, to enable that. So we're already at five. Yeah, so we can we can definitely do it. So we're already there, and I think what I'm gonna do is just hold up the formation here and just pass. That means even if they do Kai's Wrath, we could we could formation. Now they have something that's a little bit different though. It, and it's a hostage taker, which is pretty annoying. But they may still be dead. And I think that our opponent is still dead. So we have, yeah, we have plenty, plenty of damage. And we were able to, like, if our opponent had had the Kai's Wrath, we still win. So there was nothing our opponent could really do there that was going to beat us. So we board in the negates, which is another insurance against removal. And then I, and then generally I, I do like the planeswalker package cards. I am interested in taking out and 
do include the Snubhorn sentries, some of those, just because they're, they're not really an early clock, per se. The Benelish Marshals. And then some Conclave Tribunals. are Some opponents may board in Thief of... Thief against us. Thief of Sanity is a way you can get cheesed out of games, especially when you're on the draw. But other than that, Tribunal is not really that relevant. In the matchup, we're gonna mulligan that one lander. This we just have to keep. We'll take yeah, Legion's landing. It's I think it's better than a, a random card. Not not very far from the the perfect card to see there on top, but we ha we have a plan on six cards, and we're just gonna kind of hope to get this. The the Dovin is gonna be the key piece to the puzzle. Interesting. There's a, there's a there's a guild gate, or some guild gate. That's a little bit unusual. Ooh, yeah, that's good. Deputy is able to... Deputy is good, too. That's another reason to have Tribunal. Although most... A lot of lists don't have Deputy, but it is good here. All right, double Dovin. I'm impressed anyone would be so foolish as to face me. This is definitely a very different game than the previous one. And now we know our opponents on these deputies, so we will definitely be cyborging differently. Could double block, but that doesn't seem very good. I think we just play another Dovin. Tick down again to make another Thopter. And we're hoping our we're hoping to dodge a lot of stuff here from our opponent. Can't do anything about that. Although, okay, so we can potentially tick Dovin up. And get it to a nice loyalty range here. Nice, a, a good amount of loyalty, healthy amount of loyalty. Although, that's really bad. Fungal infection, never mind. Never mind. So now our opponent is gonna attack Dovin. Probably they should attack with both. Yeah, so now we have to chomp just to keep Dovin alive. But if we do, then it, yeah, so it's it's bad. I think I think we have to hope to draw one of our tribunals to get this deputy off the battlefield. Which would allow us to then Get the Dovin back. Yeah, so our, our opponent is the more mid-range version of Esper. And we didn't really have all of that information game one, but now that we know that, will definitely be cyborging differently. So th this was a a clear mistake for the attacks. So we can just double block th this deputy. And now we, we do get our Dovin back because of that, that attack that our opponent made.
I guess I'll just play the Hollow Fountain. So our opponent is aggressively trying to get rid of our Dovin pretty clearly. If we let it die, we can potentially get rid of the Teferi and flip our Legion's Landing. So I think that's fine. We're just gonna let Dovin die here. I'm not often wrong. And our opponent may be thinking about they may have been thinking about actually minusing the fairy. But no, they're gonna tick it up. So we can, as I said, we can potentially get rid of the fairy if, if our opponent doesn't have a two mana spell. We will meet again. So that was not that bad for us. There was that one bad attack that our opponent made. Now there's a thief though. So yeah, this is a matchup where I'm wishing I had more baffling ends and more tribunals. Luckily we have we have another game. So if if we don't win this game, which we're not out of this game. The gate's actually a pretty good draw. We have the aspirate which can block the thief. Alright, well that's bad for us. We have to discard the negate to the Silica Bell Hunt. So that's unfortunate. And that may... Playing that Hallowed Fountain earlier definitely hurt us there. That was my fault. I don't think our opponent should make that attack. Because we, we just get to make this trade. Oh, alright, they have dive down? Okay. Well... And we really needed some type of pump effect on that draw step. Some type of card that would get our Thopter a little bit more beefed up. Mm. And Disinformation Campaign, on the other hand, is an incentive to play the land. All right, but now, yeah, now I think we're just dead. Our opponent gets to hit us with Thief. I'm just gonna concede before our opponent gets to see any more of our deck. And then we're gonna board in some additional spot removal that we did not have in our deck in the previous game. And since, and since this isn't the Esper control variant, now, so we saw Hostage Taker game one, so I probably should have thought a little bit more about it being Esper mid-range, okay? Um, so that's on me, but negate against this version isn't as good. I don't think we want, we actually want negate. Or hunted witness, we want we do want our venerated luck stones, I think. Unbreakable formation is better if they are on cards like Kaya's Wraths rather than cards like Hostage Takers. Marshall is also another really interesting card. 
in the matchup because we don't know exactly how much our opponent has to deal with a, a Benelish Marshal. So we're just going to go a bit bigger. This is going to mean that we're not going to be quite as aggressively based. And we're going to be hoping to draw enough lands to cast our spells. So we have three lands, although unfortunately they're all glacial fortresses. But we still need to keep. We don't have any of our... Bot removal. So yeah, that was a that was a miscue on my part. Basically, Esper control is the more popular Esper deck right now, but I should have been thinking more about the potential that we were up against Esper mid range. So I think we just play history. I mean, technically our opponent could have negate, but. I just wasn't expecting them necessarily to have it. They did shock off the grave, but that could have been for removal as well. So now we just have to tribunal. Unfortunately, we, we didn't have the play of being able to play a creature plus the Tribunal. Paying full, play, full price for Tribunal doesn't feel great. So now we're just going to be fighting this, this fight of trying to stop ourselves from getting Thief of Sanity. Now that we drew a land, we can go Marshal plus Tribunal. So I am going to do that. Hopefully no dive down. We saw our opponent have dive down in the previous game. So what we can do is we can take this deputy out. Which then gives us our tribunal back and then we get to take care of the thief. And now we're just kind of hoping our opponent doesn't have a big follow-up. We've kind of done wh what we could. The sequencing. All right, so now this is rough because our opponent can now get rid of our two tribunals if they want to, which forces us to then draw. Yeah, this is really rough. We now need to draw another removal spell off the top or else we're just dead yeah this is unfortunate so even if we have this Benelish Marshal in play I don't necessarily think we're we're beating the thief. Um, we did have a line earlier where we could have left the deputy in play and just gotten rid of the thief. I don't think that necessarily would have been right though. But once thief gets going, it is really, really strong. With that being said, if we do draw removal, we can get back both of our Conclave Tribunals. Unfortunately, did not find it. 
And we, we boarded up to eight, eight total removal spells to try to get around this. So I don't think there was a line that could have won us this game. Unless, you know, I mean, if we draw, if we draw a removal spell now, that, that, this, I think is pretty much the last turn to really have a shot at this. Still not there, unfortunately. And the problem with the enchantment based removal as well is that our opponent has access to Mortify. And Mortify is a problem. Just because of how versatile it is. So I said last turn was the last turn, but this is really the last turn. We need to find a removal spell to get the deputies off the board, to get the thief off the board, to get both of our tribunals and the Benelish Marshal back. That's pretty sweet. All right, well, that happens. I think I sideboarded incorrectly for game two, and then we ended up losing that one. So that is going to do it. We went 3-2, which is still a 60% record, but the two losses felt a little bit frustrating. So Zorius aggro, sometimes it wins in a, like, when it wins, it wins, it looks insane. And then when it, when you're behind, it's, it can be like it it doesn't get out of bad situations very easily. So that's the that's the downside to the deck, but I I do think it's one of the top decks in the format. And let's go ahead and claim our prizes. Fifteen hundred gold. Some sweet cards, and that is going to do it.